Good afternoon and welcome. Welcome to our, uh, our sharing this afternoon, almost early evening, I guess. And, and wow, we, what a week it's been in Melbourne. So welcome to all our Melbourne-based and Victorian-based uh, business owners, our clients and, um, and our guests that are joining us here this evening. You know, a couple of weeks ago when we set this date uh, for uh, David and, and, and Nick to share uh, their perspective on, again, you know, the journey since, um, since March as it relates to COVID and uh, no, no, no two ways about it, our lives as it relates to, you know, keeping our heads cool keeping our heads very much in control, keeping our heads in the right place. When we set this date, we didn't realise that uh, we'd be moving into stage four uh, lockdowns and specifically in, in, in Melbourne and Victoria as it relates to some of the, uh, the, the, the progress, I guess, in terms of our uh, way of dealing with the COVID-19 situation, which globally has certainly made a, a significant um, personal and economic impact on many, many people in many, many countries. So I guess um, first things first, I uh, just want to make sure, um, you know, in, in the last 72 hours, um, our clients, our community, our business benchmark group, the first and most important message um, to each one of you has been, and, and we know we've spoken to many of you at least two, three, four times thus far um, since, um, since Monday, it's been, a, it's been a real imperative. It's not a choice that you have a cool head. Your head must be in control. And there's, and there's plenty of, I guess, um, elements as to the last several days. It's been a bit confusing. It's the gray area as to can we, can't we, um, I guess, um, run our businesses. What can we do? What can't we do as it relates to further restrictions that have come in play for many of us and what is essential, what is not essential. All that, as we know, by the hour and as suggested to, um, to every one of our clients on Tuesday in the roundtable groups that we, um, we delivered immediately for our community. Clarity and clarification is occurring as we speak. So over the next three, four, five days, there'll be more on that and keep your head cool. Keep yourself in control for what you can control. The one thing to understand, and, I'm, and I guess David and Nick in their own way are going to share in a couple of moments as well. Think of what this next six week period is, whether you're in Melbourne or anywhere in Australia for that matter, or, or, or New Zealand for that matter. Think about the next six weeks about no different about being an ice cube. You know, you, we're being frozen and we're all in this together. You know, there's a goalpost that started, let's say midnight last night and 42 days later in six weeks time, we, um, all things being equal and, and, and all things being equal as it relates to the health issue out there, we're going to be all back out to play. So consider this six week period no different to what is typically your December, January, Christmas period when your business and your life is a little different. And all we're doing right now is we're experiencing the six week period as it relates to your business. Cause I know this is a, a business forum that we come from, although it's our headspace and our, and our mental health that will keep us in control for what we can. And this is a six week period that you may not be delivering and or performing as it relates to your business as your typical August, early September would go but treat it as an early Christmas where your four to six weeks between Christmas and an Australia day long weekend is a little bit different. So you have a really good opportunity to be prepared to have the next best six weeks for what it is that you typically wouldn't be doing as it relates to an August and September. You're going to be doing other things in your business that are also going to be imperative to your growth. Finally, and most importantly, above anything else, you know, our loved ones, our home, our family, you know, making sure that we are true to being, you know, as best we can, truthful, honest, expressive, controlled, listening, asking questions, ensuring everyone in the home is just as safe as, as you need to be, um, stable as you need to be. And um, again, it's not about judgment. It's about vulnerability and being okay with vulnerability and yeah, you know, this is a perfect opportunity here tonight to discuss and, and share and, and, and ask questions. Please get engaged. There's, a, there's the, the question forum on this um, webinar for each of us to get engaged and involved with David, with Nick, with myself and, and, and with each other. So without a further ado, I'm going to introduce um, David, David Butterfin and Nick Farr to join us. They run a business called Resilience Builders. We have just completed with many of our clients um, a 10-week a, a, a um 
Leadership in Crisis series. We, David and I have worked on designing the next stage of that program. Um, and, and I'm going to continue to call it Leadership in, in Crisis because it's about how do I keep a cool head so that I'm leading, not panicking. So I want to introduce David and Nick to the, um, to the, to the screen and, and we'll, we'll get them engaged and involved. David, good afternoon, good evening. I know you've had a busy how day as well. And good Nick, you, good mate. afternoon, good evening. How are you? So, uh, rather me read off a very long and illustrious um, bio sheet. And for, and for those that haven't met you guys yet and or uh, are seeing you for the first time, David, do you, do you want to give me a 30 second you know, bio on, on where, what and how has got you here? Yeah, look, I mean, um, basically my, my background's been in sport, you know, and obviously in high performance, you know, dealing with Olympic athletes, um, been involved in AFL footy for over 20 years. Um, quite for sure, has been very lucky. We've got a background in exercise physiology, got an MBA, got a lot of leadership programming and high performance and the parallels of high performance and even small business strongly here in the synergy and love work with your group last time to Stefan going through the um, coping crisis program. Really great. Got some great insights from your team. So looking forward to this session tonight. Thank you. And, and Nick, do you want to give us a, a 30 second little uh, um, self promotion about your journey in life? mate? <laughs> Thanks Stefan. Uh, great to be back. Well, I don't have any of those university degrees that Butters has got. Um, I've, uh, I, I spent, uh, I joined the police force very early. I had um, just over 20 years, most of that as a detective, um, busy locations in Melbourne. Um, I was always a fanatical skier and and, uh, yeah. and climber and uh, I sort of started paralleling a Himalayan trekking and climbing career along alongside that from the late 90s. Um, I got out of the job about oh, 13, 14 years ago now and, and went into the, I guess, the adventure travel space pretty full time, but I was, you know, building an office in Nepal and, um, and so been able to run and lead um, expeditions now in Nepal, in the Himalaya for 20 years. So in terms of my leadership background and my resilience background, I, I certainly got a bit of the theory when I was in, in the police, but, you know, I think most of what I've, I've learned that has really stuck has been through my years in Nepal and being immersed in that um, mountain environment, that mountain culture with the, with the Sherpa people and, and, um, and finding out what it takes to, to be successful on big mountains. Uh, fantastic. Thank you, Nick and, and David, and welcome. And, and I guess as, as, the, um, as the week is unfolding, David and Nick, and, and, and take it in turns as to who wishes to uh, lead with this, um, as the week is unfolding, and, and when we set this date uh, a couple of weeks ago, we didn't realise we would be in the, uh, in, in the immersion of uh, a stage four lockdown, literally 72 hours uh, in the making. What are you seeing out there at the moment, um, David, as it relates to people's behaviour, people's, you know, I guess the way they, they, they're going about it and, and what are your views at this point as to what you're seeing? Look, that's a really, really good question, Stefan. I think that um, there are so many of us, um, and I've seen a lot in, a in various sectors, you know, this is um, people are in a survival mode, you know, that's a fear upon them. And as a result, when you're in that survival mode, you lose the ability to be pragmatic and calm and creative. Um, we don't know uh, what's ahead of us. We don't know that. So really what's crucial is focusing on what we can control and not what we can't control. So there's a lot of uncertainty and people get getting caught up in this narrative. And look, we're surrounded by um, a lot of pessimism and negativity in the media and a lot of blame and stuff. And it's really kind of that, that is affecting people's narratives and mindsets as well. So I'm seeing a lot of um, uncertainty. Uh, there's a lot of people in, in that survival mode, but however, there's a lot of people too that, um, that are anchoring in, sticking to their values, really good behavioural traits um, that are, are remaining optimistic and hopeful they can get through this too. So there's, there's, two, there's, two, there's two kind of cohorts there. Um, hopefully, it's more of the latter for this group um, going forward. And, and Nick, what are, you, um, what are you getting to see in your walk right now as it relates to the last? I mean, we were talking before we came on about the impact on the families and and particularly the younger kids who are at school and not at school and, you know, that, the, the impact for them and how that plays out. What, what are you seeing in your walk in the last 72 hours? Yeah, look, we did have a chat about that before we started, Stefan, didn't we? And, and I guess I'll, 
I'm a father with uh, two younger kids and, um, you know, we can settle into that idea that we've got 42 days now where we're pretty locked down again and we're, we're fairly restricted in what we can and we can't do. But what I've noticed is just, um, and my kids, I think they did, they've, they've done really well and they are doing really well. But at their age, they, they are struggling to, um, to fully understand why it is that they can't be at school, why it is they can't see their friends, why they, you know, my, my little bloke today was pretty upset that he couldn't go up and just trade some footy carts with um, a kid at the end of the street. So, and, and the other thing that you, you, I mean, we have, a, we have, a, we know what 42 days means. Young, young people don't really have any concept of that that time period. So, you know, we came out of it briefly and then we're back into it again. So, you know, we're at the coalface and I think um, when you when you are a parent and you do have young children, you, you, your default concerns are always more for them than they are for you. I mean, we'll, we'll get through it. We're, uh, we're big enough, old enough and experienced enough to be able to do that. But, um, but it's a different perspective seeing it from their point of view. So, you know, um, you know, there's no rule book, there's no guidebook. It's it's the first time for all of us. So, like Butter said before, we've really got to focus into what we can control, what we're good at, what our strengths are, and, and you know, from a family point of view, what are we good at as a family? How can we pass the time and stay engaged with each other, and um, and and not just not just pass the time, but we still want to live life, don't we? We we want to we want to find ways to be having meaningful engagement quality time together and that's that's the challenge i mean the great thing about uncertainty stefan that we've got now is it takes us off autopilot you know we've got to get more intentional about what we're doing we've got to give a bit more thought to it put a bit more structure around it but lots of opportunities we keep saying that there's a lot of opportunities and just as it relates to i guess you know this lockdown specifically in melbourne um you know, there's more people working from home. There's definitely the, the, the children are back at home with their schooling. So it's, it's almost like it's gone up another, another notch as it relates to the restrictions of movement. And, and in fairness, you know, the first time was like a little bit of an adventure in its own right. Like it had its awkwardness and you sort of got around with a bit of giggle and a bit of, oh, can you keep it down in the other room? Cause I'm in here doing my work. And, and, you know, but there's a lot of, there's many, parents and business owners and and team members that are trying to juggle and, and you know the younger the kids are the more the impact and therefore you know by the time they get around to doing what is typically their normal day's work they're exhausted i mean they're mentally exhausted and and you know they've got to do their end of what is needed as it relates to their job or their or their business and juggling juggling the two is is definitely what we're seeing it's it's lending itself to not only emotional, but physical and definitely the mental fatigue holistically right now. And we're only three days in and we can already see the impact it's having on, on some of our business owner clients and their families trying to juggle everything. So what are some tips as it relates to, again, just you know, keeping yourself focused, maybe compartmentalizing. Okay. This is my time to do this. I've got to be focused on helping the kids do their homework. You know, if, if, if I need to play with crayons again, I will. Um, Although I need to do the work over here, I'm just going to push that out. So help me understand a little bit as, as it relates to some tips as to how do I compartmentalize as in I've got more to do in a given day. I've got to do it with the kids and I've got to do it for my work and or my business. How do I do that in some simple one, two, three tips? What do you think, guys? Um, oh, I'll kick off, but as quickly, we've talked about it before, Stefan, the structure. Um, structuring your day really, really important. Planning it from um, from the get go. You know, if, if if you are at home and homeschooling and and things like that, and you find you've got more on your plate, you've got to find some um, you've got to find some extra hours. I mean, if you're still going to be trying to function with a business, um, with with work, you've still got to find some time for exercise, a little bit of me time. And now we're we're injecting anywhere between you know maybe three to five hours homeschooling plus some entertainment time um, for the kids because no one wants them wants the young ones just left to their own devices all day on iPads and things like that you, you've realistically got to manufacture some more hours so you know what does that look like uh, for me it looks like going to bed earlier uh, getting up earlier 
um, getting a couple of hours of work done while while the kids are, are still in bed, and then I've got a bit of credit, a bit of bit of um, bit of credit in the bank. So we talk about that a lot: structure, um, planning, preparation. That and, and for my background, that's probably what I'm good at: logistics, planning, pre preparing, getting things ready. So that comes quite um, naturally to me, but I understand it doesn't come naturally to everybody else. Um, so when, when we talk about setting out our day and our time parameters and things like that, um, you know, you've really got to reflect on that. You've got to really look, look closely at, at what you need, what you have to get done in a day and how you're going to find the time to do that and um, planning it out accordingly. Yeah, good. David, um, do you have anything to add to that? Yeah, look, I think, I think the operative word in that question you asked, Stefan, was how. And that is crucial. This is for a lot of you asking the question how, but before we even answer that question, how do we do it? I, the question I would say, why are you doing it? What is your purpose? What's your sense of purpose? What is your why? And once you really start to unpack that and you're reflective of your, what, what your why is, why are you doing business? Why do you want to become a more effective leader? Um, ask that question then that morphs into the actual methodology of the how. This is how you create your structure. Because basically, your why, all the decisions you come back to, this is why I'm doing it. Okay, so is it actually building your program, um, uh, your business, yourself, into that next, you know, the next realm, family as well. And really, this is, and this, and this is kind of our why, understanding your sense of purpose and vision. You know, why have you joined on tonight? You know, basically you ask these questions. Um, it always brings you back, you know, um, to, to what you actually do. Once you, get, once you get clarity around your why and you have an understanding, the how is pretty easy. It's not, it's not as difficult. So I think that's important to a lot of us. And unfortunately, because we're a lot of people are in survival mode, they lose the ability to be reflective. So you've got to sit back, and I mentioned this kind of analogy before, it's like being on the dance floor, you're, you're cutting all the moves in the dance floor, you're going 100 miles an hour, you've got to get up the dance floor, get on the balcony, that's where you become reflective. And when you're reflective, you become strategic. That is your how. Good leaders can step back, reflect, and then become strategic. And we have to be nimble. You know, this is important where you can pivot now, adapt, and adjust your business. You know, this is how you can get your people momentum forward. That's going to be really important. So, um, it's not it's not really rocket science, but it's having a framework and structure that gives you confidence and hope in going forward. Good question, um, Stefan. And, and 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 just an extension of that. I mean, you know, there's a lot of um, there's a lot of commentary out there, and it's and it's a comment, and I think it's the right comment. It's the right phrase. It's the right statement. You know. Focus on what you can control. I know I've been using that plentiful as it relates to not only the last three days, but mm -hmm. since March um, 23rd, when you know that door knocked on our uh, shores here in Australia called mm -hmm. COVID. Focus on what you can control. Focus on what you can control. Now, focus on what you can control. If you have uncertainty, you have survival, you have flight versus fight versus freeze syndrome, Focus on what you can control it can be a very loaded and almost expiring comment. So our message to our clients at Business Benchmark Group was cool heads. You've got to be in control. You've got you to do your best to do that. I've already mentioned it five times in this, in this call thus far as well. As it relates to control what you can control and cool heads, what is it that really determines? I mean, we hear structure, and I'm, I'm a huge believer in that. We hear step back and look in to confirm you're on the right page, doing the right things at the right time for the right people and outcomes. What is it that being in control of the things you can control, if we were to unpack that, what does that actually mean? How can we do that as it relates to resilience and grit versus judgment? I didn't do it. Wow. Well, where, where, where do you start? That's a really, that's an interesting point. And I think, you know, there is so much ruminating at the moment, you know, thinking what's going to happen, you know, the next 
weeks, months, and years. We, you know, we can get caught up in that. And what I'd recommend for many people, and I, I'm not, not just business owners, leaders, students, um, families, is to anchor into the now, move into the present. And by doing that, that is a skill. But there is techniques that we can use through mindfulness, exercise, breathing, uh, you know, positive affirmations. There are things that we can do just anchor us into now to keep our focus. When we, are, when we have focus, we have the ability to be creative and then think strategically. When we're in the fear mode, all of a sudden things kind of become inhibited and we, our behaviour starts to drop. And what does that do? It affects others around us. And, you know, our, you, the people you work with from, from a collegiality point of view, your family, your friends. And that really starts to kind of compromise your connection with people. So, and I'm not saying this flippantly, it's getting into the now. That, that is, it takes time. But we all have the ability to adapt and to adjust to, to, to actually discomfort. This is your opportunity in your growth as a leader, as a person, how you can build a better version of yourself. And that's why we recommend that first and foremost is know how to lead yourself. And really, once you know how to lead yourself, then you have the ability to lead others. So it's kind of a, like, it's an open-mindedness. You know, this is, you know, and Stephen talks about this a lot about, we, we're lifelong learners. This is that growth mindset. You know, this is how we, okay, now we need to learn, we need to adjust, we need to keep, keep kind of pivoting to the point where we can build our business, build ourselves, cultivate our family and so forth. Growth mindset is a habit. And really, you're going to have some, you know, failings along the way. We all do, but they're our greatest learnings. We don't really fail, we learn. You know, in football and sport, we think, you know, you're losing, you're winning. Well, you know, okay, you win. But think of it this way. What are you doing right well at the moment right now you're doing well then what could you do better this is the growth mindset and when we think okay we can get better here in yourself in your own micro behaviors in your business as well it's looking at those things and then what can we actually embed into our cadence and ourselves and then maybe in the business so growth mindset and i'm, I'm sure that some of you you know your children there at school they're hearing this term no different to business owners and leaders that having that growth mindset enables you to get upside in yourself. So um, that, that is, it is a mindset. A lot of this now comes down to mindset, how we start shifting ourselves into that next, that next level of, of leadership performance um, and supporting your people who work with you as well. Yeah. Well, well, well answered there. I, um, again, I, 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 I feel this is such a, as much as it feels it's terrible, it's heavy, it's, it's unusual, it's unknown. I think out of these opportunities, out of these opportunities to be in a, in a place that we're not typically at for many of us, it, it's uncharted waters, comes such an opportunity to dig deep and, and, and allow some of these areas that are not your typical mastery areas to certainly come to the surface and, um, and let it let it run, let it run as it relates to okay, what can I control that I didn't think up until a week ago I could. How do you take a different a different type of breath, Nick? How do you take a deep, different type of breath? How do I review something with an extra minute to think it through? How do I slow things down? So it 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 is so important that we are allowing allowing what for many of us would be a natural approach to the things you can control versus forced control. And I think that's where empathy and, and again, no judgment, vulnerability, truthfulness. Yeah, it's okay to not have all the answers. Fair to say. And, and leadership is about not having all the answers. Leadership is about, Okay, we're going down this narrow bridge and we can only look forward and don't look down. This is not the time to look down. This is the time that we must look forward. I can't do this on my own. Can I ask a question? Leadership is okay to ask questions. Very okay. Nick, what are your thoughts? Yeah, look, 
I think, you know, there's a big self-awareness piece here, um, Stefan, and when you're talking about what you can and, and what you can't control, um, you know, firstly, you've got to look at yourself, um, you know, your, your own actions and how, how are you behaving and how is that affecting, um, well, not just yourself, but the people that are around you. You um, need to understand is what you're doing each day, is it, is it being helpful to the situation or is it being harmful? You know, sometimes your decision-making process has to switch from being, um, you know, emotional to, to a little bit more um, logical, you know. Um, decision-making is, is part of the, the whole um, judgment paradigm. There's the, there's the problem-solving bit, that, but there's also the learning from our mistakes bit, um, which is really critical in, in, in the whole judgment scheme of things. Something we talk about a little bit too is at the moment is, um, you know, when we're trying to develop our self-awareness, a really, a, a really fantastic way to get insight is to ask other people for feedback. Um, you know, so we all know people that, that we like to give feedback to. Um, we all know people that we, you know, get feedback from. Sometimes we probably like it and sometimes we don't. But, but really getting feedback, um, constructive feedback is a really, it's a really important time for that. And you know what? We're actually wired to receive feedback a certain way, Stefan. Um, we may have talked about this, but, but the way we respond to feedback, you know, you're talking about um, cool heads. Are, are, we, are we cool headed? When we receive feedback, or do we, um, or do we deny it? Do we deny, deny the feedback that we're getting, or do we accept it? Um, you know, that's that's a very interesting, in, very interesting part of the of the of the paradigm as well. Do we engage with the person who's giving us that feedback superficially, or do we genuinely engage with that person with what they're telling us? And you know, if you think of those three things, you know, most of us can work out where where we sit on that. But the upshot of all that is if, if, if you're not good at receiving the feedback, um, then people that are, that are in a good position to, to be able to give that to you, um, they get very reluctant to keep trying to contribute to your growth, really, because of, of the way you respond. Um, you know, so this is, a, this is a really important part of the, the self-awareness process. There's a lot of things we can do. We can do diagnostics. We can... We can do find out what our strengths are through some of the tools that we've, we've worked with with you in the past. But really, there's a lot of people that are pretty close to us um, who can give us some feedback. Butters and I were listening to a podcast the other day, and I was um, um, it was an interesting. They, they, were, they, were, they were talking about Churchill and how his wife was was really a, a um, you know his, his greatest supporter and ally, and how she'd often. Um, you know, let him know when he was when he wasn't treating the people as well as he should have, or if, if she had some advice, or if he was lo if he was losing his audience, um, you know, and he really took her adv her advice on board. Um, some of, some of the stuff was quite fascinating. I won't do it justice talking talking about it, but he was he was very very receptive to everything that she'd say. She was very close to him, so she knew him very well. So I think um, I think the awareness piece, and you'll hear David will talk about that a lot. Um, you know, the self-awareness at the moment is, is what am I doing? How can I improve is very important. And the great thing with that is it's part of the emotional intelligence spectrum. And it's very coachable. And it's very changeable. So we can really improve. We can really, this is not like IQ. You know, we've got our IQ. IQ is very different. You know, we, it's really, um, it's really plastic. We can mould it and we can, we can, we can get better. So, yeah, that's, that's, um, that's a big part for me right at the moment. David, did you wish, um, th thank you, Nick. That, that's, um, again, really good. The self-awareness, the feedback, the ability to, again, as a leader, you shouldn't feel that all the pressure should be on you. I mean, we've got some questions that we need to um, put, um, put, put to the room in a moment. And, and um, as a leader, it's not all up to you. As a leader, by asking questions, getting curious, being okay to receive feedback, mm -hmm. ensuring you're on the right track, you don't need to agree or like what people give you 
as feedback. You just need to respect it's coming from the right place. And if it's delivered the right way, and, and the right way has a various way of uh, you know, playing out, um, it, it's to your benefit. And particularly in times like this where we're all feeling the pressure. So we have some questions here from our, um, from our audience. Um, Camilla asks, as a bookkeeper, how can I offer support to my clients who are struggling due to the shutdown? Now, I can, I've got a few views on this, but um, do either of you fine young men want to share first? <laughs> Thanks for the compliments of young men. Um, <laughs> Louis, that's a really good question. You know, I think in a way, what are, what are people wanting from leaders at the moment? Um, they're not after inspiration. They're not really after it. They're after pretty much care. You know, really it comes down to being non-judgmental, empathetic, you know, kindness. This is where we'll come back in spades. Asking, asking people, how can I help you here? You know, Nick said that before, soliciting that feedback. And you know, what can I do to support you here in this situation? And, and really, there's an element of vulnerability to come back to you. But, you know, people really want to be looked after at the moment. They're looking for guidance, but asking them. Empowering them gives them autonomy. Um, what can I do to help you here? Have no judgment. Keep respectful. Um, this will come back in spades for you. This is not just, don't think of it just a transaction here. This is not, there's nothing to do with transaction. It's actually, leadership is nothing about you right now. It is about helping other people. It's being altruistic, um, caring for people. And they know that. They know, they've got an antenna up that you're actually generally concerned and care, just dialing into them. How you going? How you holding up? But those things are, are fundamentally the most important thing right now. You know, from a leadership point of view, um, this is how you can actually really create this connection, this trust, the psychological safety down the track where you can really build this relationship. That's, that's, a, that's what I'll be recommending right now. Yeah, for, and from, my, from our perspective, and, and this is the instruction we gave to every one of our clients on Tuesday and Wednesday, and, and this may help you as well, Camilla, it's about firstly, taking stock within, making sure everyone's okay within your own team. And I guess as a bookkeeper, you might or you might not have team, but regardless, you take a stock internally first to make sure everyone's okay. Mm -hmm. And then the first thing you do immediately is reach out to every one of your current clients. And it's not about transaction as David says, it's about care factor and it's about how can I help you? And, and, and that alone is such a powerful, powerful um, human touch. The second component to that is we have a responsibility as um, service providers, regardless what our service and or product is, to ensure that those that are in our community, clients, suppliers, and, and, and thereafter, we have an obligation to reach out to them to make sure they're okay. That, that elevates social connectedness. I think, David, you, you, you guys, you and Nick have said it really well over the, uh, the 10 week um, program we just finished with you guys. Um, you know, it, it, it's about what we're really trying to do right now to beat the health issue is physical distancing, not so much social distancing. Mm. And, and that's a misunderstood um, reference. And David and Nick have really highlighted that. So, Camelia, I'd be reaching out, as David has also alluded to. And, you know, the way you can support someone that has a shutdown business is either give them the, um, um, the business card of Business Benchmark Group or reach out and just see how they're going. That's what you need to do. Marita says, most of the time I can hold it all together for the team, but today I'm really feeling the pressure. Do you have any tips to help improve my concentration and then how to relax? Nick, do you want to tackle that? Uh, I didn't see that question come through. Sorry, uh, Stefan. But I think, um, well, you need some, you need some me time. You need some declutter time. And, and um, you know, this is where something is, as simple as um, getting out, having a walk, um, you know, having the opportunity to be reflective. Um, you know, it's, it's getting the better of you. Sorry, I, I don't see her name. Oh, there we go. Marita. Marita. Um, yeah, Marita, what do, you, what do you really like to do and what do you really need to do um, for you? Um, you know, this is, this is really, really important. We talk about the benefits of, of um, you know, good nutrition, 
and exercise and sleep, all these things to, to will help, help greatly with your wellbeing at the moment. But sometimes when, um, when you're really hitting the wall, you just need to find a way to get a bit of perspective. Um, you know, we also talk a lot about the, the power of gratitude at the moment. Um, as bad as things are, um, and as tough as some days you're doing it, if you can, you know, look around you and, and I'm sure you're going to find some positives. You'll find some things that, that you are grateful for that are, that are working well for you. Um, and we focus on those. Um, you know, you might like to think about focusing um, on the things you're good at. You know, we've all got strengths. You know, what are you good at? Really leverage those at the moment. Ask people for help, you know. That's, that's a really important part of, you know, the courage that we all need to show at the moment to, to be prepared to be vulnerable in this situation. You don't have to stand up there and, and pretend like you've got all the answers and you can solve all the problems, you know. Reach out to people. Reach out to your support networks, you know. Support and, and good um, connectedness. And I know at the moment we're, we're being forced to use the online platforms a lot more. But these are, again, a real... A real um, a really a real mainstay of our of our physical and mental well-being so you know ask people for help a lot of people aren't good at doing it because you, you you're probably the, the sort of person that's always giving people a lot of help but you know taking that step um, you know showing that you haven't got all the answers being being vulnerable in those situations is a is a real strength in itself butters i know i think that the last bit's really important i think and Marita, that acknowledging where you're at um, is is the first part of self-regulation. Once, and it's not being denial. Once you acknowledge that you're feeling a bit wobbly or vulnerable, that's okay. What it tells us is, is what's the intervention that you need to put in place to recalibrate. You get back of the tram tracks, and then whether it's gratitude, whether it's mindfulness, whether it's eating, whether it's support net mechanisms, journaling, positive affirmation, all the things that we kind of discuss and talk about. What is it? And you'll know the answer for yourself through reflection. Yeah, okay, you're feeling, you know, overwhelmed. All right, okay, you've acknowledged it. What do you need to do? What do you need to do to get back? And it's going to give you some momentum because it is about momentum moving forward. It is all about moving forward. Keep going forward. Don't project too far forward. But no, I think I think your answer is in the question, really, is that you've acknowledged that you're feeling that way. And that's normal. That is normal to feel like that. So Fear we're going to be finishing at about 6 o'clock this, um, this evening. So... We've got 10 or 15 minutes to go and please keep the questions coming through. We're getting a handful of um, questions coming from Facebook as well, which is great. We'll get to the next few in a couple of moments. So we, um, we, we, we invested a bit of time in, in, in creating the second, um, the second installment, let's call it. And um, it's, it's not even a building block. It's a continuation in my, in my opinion, the way I see it of the work we did in the last um, 10 to 12 weeks in the leadership in crisis program. So that was a real, um, that was a very um, in, engaging exercise, David, you and I went through to uh, mm -hmm. design the next phase. And, 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 and are you okay in just, um, again, as it relates to where we are now, because we never saw this coming. And as it relates to the 10 part um, series in the next phase, as it relates to leadership in crisis, resilience in mm -hmm. crisis, um, the program will be kicking off on the 17th, Monday, the 17th of August, all things being equal. Mm. Um, it'll be a 5 p.m. kickoff. All the information that may be needed, please reach out to Nikki on our team at Business Benchmark Group. If you want to know what it looks like, um, if you're a client at Business Benchmark Group, then the, um, you know, the, same, the same opportunity to be involved, get your team involved. We're running it at 5 p.m. to give everyone an opportunity to run it, run it over the kitchen table with your family. This is also um, great learning and distinctions for your husbands and wives and your life partners and your children if needed. So you get five links per, um, per application. And um, I just think it's a phenomenal, um, a phenomenal muscle that needs to be built for all of us. You know, we talk about cool heads, we talk about controlling the things you need to control, but there's so much more that, that needs to be unpacked in those two statements. And um, what David and Nick bring to the table, particularly for our business owner clientele at Business Benchmark Group, is a phenomenal, um, you know, very pinpointed focus on, you know, the whole being, the being as it relates to your, your headspace. 
the things that make you perform better start always 100% from the way you are being. So David, if I, if I throw this back to you, and, and again, this is not about, you know, it's not a sales pitch, but this is more a, can you elaborate more on what this next part of the leadership in crisis over the next 10 weeks? And if you wish to share yeah. a few um, of our pretty pictures here, please do so. Yeah, no, look, but, um, I'm, I'm throwing this back to you to just, again, and I know you're a, you're a humble and subtle young man. So <laughs> do your thing. No, good on you, Stefan. Look, I think in a way, I like the way, look, muscle, you know, and we talk about neuroplasticity, how we change the brain. And, but leadership is a verb. You know, it is a doing. It is a doing regularly. It is a micro behaviors that you do regularly. And it's building your collateral as a leader, the tool that's going to help you build other leaders, build your business, build a better version of you. And there is a mirror of different things, you know, and I've kind of touched on before is that the journey really is how we lead ourselves first. What are the tools? Um, you know, going to the why, why do you want to become a leader? But then really the key is building other leaders, making yourself kind of unnecessary. And what I mean by that, you sit back and you're building other people that can do some heavy lifting for you. You empower them, you help them grow. Just because you actually ignite the flame in them that doesn't mean your flame goes out but we'll give you the tools that you can actually manage the load the pressures and so forth and i you know there is the next wave of leadership these kind of leadership theories but really the key now is knowing really how to lead yourself how to have a flat line leadership how you bring your team together and what it is from a cultural point of view too so we'll give you some techniques and strategies to build your team um, how to maintain momentum, how to drive performance, accountability. Um, these things are, are, are fundamental. The things that worked in high level uh, sport works in business as well. We know that. The research is around that, how we create that kind of culture too. So a lot of things, and the program is about how we work as a leader ourselves, how we develop ourselves. And that's really what Nick spoke about, self-awareness, self-regulation. And then from there, Okay, how do we actually build others? What do we need to do to build others? And when distractions come at us, we're talking about adversity, setbacks, how do we manage ourselves? How do we mitigate through those obstacles? What do we need to do? There is a plan and structure. What's the outcome you want? What are the obstacles in front of you right now? How do you manoeuvre yourself around those so it enables you to grow individually, but also as a business too? These are little shifts in yourself and doing them regularly. And over time, they become automated in your operating rhythm. It doesn't, you, you, it, it's not unnatural, it becomes natural to you. So these are things we work with. You have frameworks, you have activities, you have reflections, you have discussion, but it comes down to one thing, which will give you the chance of that growth mindset is courage. The courage to move forward. We see fear at us. What do we do? We retract, we move away from it. No, move toward it. Right now, this is your greatest opportunity to get growth in yourself and in your business. You might think, oh, hang on, I'm just up against it. Yeah, that's a narrative. But this is where you can get yourself into that kind of discomfort, learn about yourself, because this, as Nick mentioned before, this will become a reference point for you and your business and your colleagues who work with you. And you think, okay, when the next one comes, we can really tackle this. We'll give you confidence. This is how we get momentum. So we'll talk through strategies there. We work on kind of the four pillars as well, you know, which is physical, social, uh, emotional, and spiritual as a leader, what you need to do. But how you harness energy in your teams, how you build connection with your customers, that's going to be important. Um, you know, I can say that the group that I had previously with uh, Stefan's group, Business Benchmark Group, is that, what we noticed, Nick and I, we've done hundreds of these, hundreds of these online programs in different sectors, government, uh, corporate, like Telstra, we're doing Telstra at the moment. But there's something unique, and Nick and I have, have spoken about Business Benchmark Group. And I said, what is it with these guys? They're, they're a lot more optimistic. How is it their, their narratives are more positive? It's probably a reflection of the program they've done. Now, I don't know whether it's because business people are more entrepreneurial, they've got more resilience, but there's something about them that had a higher baseline than all the other cohorts. 
<laughs> we're talking over a thousand people here. So there's something unique, whether it's just a unique cohort, I don't think it is. I think there is a, there is a, there are some correlations here. So, and I would back into the same exists with, with you guys too. So, um, we, we do talk about the spirituality of, of teams and the leadership in you as well. And that's things we've touched on today, compassion, empathy, kindness, and compassion, not just to people, but to yourself as well. Things aren't going well. We, we, we don't sabotage ourselves and hijack our, 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 our capabilities. No, no. Some things we say to us, we would never say to our best friend, so don't, we don't say that to us. We shift that habit. It's a shifting uh, mindset. No, I remain positive, optimistic, generate hope, energy. That's a skill, uh, but we'll, that's how we self-coach. So we'll talk about that through as well. Um, and the last one, Nick, the last slide you've got there, and, and this gives us, we'll turn this off and give you a chance to have a bit of a chat. Um, but really in a way is that it's through this kind of self-coaching um, feedback, which Nick spoke about before in soliciting feedback, empowering others. Then we can really start to look, have a window of ourselves, how we improve our leadership capabilities. That's enough of me talking. I'd rather probably hear from you guys really about questions about where you're at, what you're doing well at the moment, what you're showing. So there are some questions here that we, we can get through as a starting point. Okay. Now, the, uh, the, the, the commentary around the cohorts or the, uh, the group of businesses that just finished the recent um, instalment of Leadership in Crisis and, mm -hmm. and some of them are coming back for the second instalment, which is great. Um, there's no surprise to the way they, they entered. And there is absolutely no surprise of the way they finished and they continue. I mean, it's a byproduct of the business benchmark group community. And I don't, I don't say that lightly. I'm actually very proud to be a, um, you know, in a privileged position to see it from the balcony, literally mm -hmm. as to how amazing the movement that business benchmark group is and continues to be. It's um, it's a phenomenal, um, it's a phenomenal movement as a community and what we do. And, and, you know, there, there are plenty of um, options out there doing what we do, but we are the business benchmark group, not the business wishful, hopeful one day soon group. And therefore, when you put your hand up to bring your business to go through the methodology at business benchmark group, one thing you must bring with you or take to a whole new level is belief and courage and accountability. And um, they're not for the faint-hearted, as you would know, David and Nick, in the journeys both you have been and continue to be on. Okay, questions from Jake Mitchell. Do you believe love and intent are the critical elements to a leader's ability to manage an acute situation? Oh, absolutely. I think, you know, you treat him as a person first, employee second. You know, this is this is this is fundamental. Um, you know, this is when I had athletes, players, I treat them as a person first, player second. You gotta really know, and this is like your business, you gotta love your business, you gotta love your people in your business, love your customers, you know, generally care for them. Um, and people know that. Right now, people know that is that is really important. It's a good great question. I, and I think that's I think it's it's high it's high on the list right now. This is what and, and it's and it's interesting, you know, it's a male asking about the word love and, and and you know, ten years ago that would have been frowned upon and yet right now, as you said earlier, mentioned earlier, it's 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 not about top down leadership anymore. It's about we're all inclusive and it's side to side, bottom up, top bottom, we're all in this. I mean the whole hierarchical approach to business and leadership is so is so being broken and, and emotional intelligence, as Nick mentioned, EQ, which is synonymous with love, because that's a that's an EQ word, is, is is not to be frowned upon anymore. It's not a weak word anymore. It's a very important word and a very important element of, you know, we are in this together. Um, Joanna, hi there. Thank you for this opportunity. How do you manage exhaustion? I'm working triple the amount during COVID. I'm a tertiary teacher. So breaking point is real. Though the why is of course so strong at the moment, which is what keeps us going. I'd like to support my team with their exhaustion and overwhelmed states also. Thanks. Nick or David, meditation I'm thinking. 
Well, as you know, I'm a, I'm a big into, I'm big into meditation and mindfulness. Um, you know, when when you increase your load um, and you burn the candle both ends, I'd love to say, Joanna, you can get a bigger candle, but you can't. So um, you've got to find, and this is a priority. You, this is a priority. If you need to put some respite in that day to look after yourself, to be able to function well. If you don't, then what happens, performance will, will slide and you'll compromise others around you. This is a non-negotiable. It goes back to the question and Nick, Nick touched on it, I touched on it. Is it helping or is it harming? Work out what works well for you, whether it's mindfulness, whether it's eating well, whether it's exercise, getting more sleep. These are things that are really important right now. This is a long-term game. Of course, there's going to be times when you have your head down, bum up, and you work hard. Of course, that's that's reality of of when you're a leader. But at the same token, you need to put some systems in place that enables you to actually produce. What you expend, you need to renew. You need to get homeostasis. You need to get balance. That is a challenge. Good leaders have this kind of balance. They actually have this high productivity, but they have this high recovery as well. You remain creative and strategic. And we talk about a lot of the tools that enables people to actually um, work through high lows in dealing with stress that comes at them. Nick, you want to add to that? Or? Yeah, look, I will. I'll just, all I'll, all I'll add to that, but is, is that, um, Joanne, sometimes you've really got to remove yourself too from where, from where you are. If you're working from home, I, I assume you are. Um, you know, I'm not sure where you live, but can you can you go down to is is the beach close? Is is there a park close by? Is there a river you can you can walk along? Because you you've got to find a way to renew and rejuvenate yourself when you get to that point, and it's impossible to do it while you're on the treadmill. So if if you you know because this is the environment that we've that we've now created at home that we've that most of us are in. So the ability to go and just be somewhere separate for a little while, um, take some quiet time, get that stillness, because it's the stillness, it's the stillness and that quiet time that lets you get the clarity and the perspective um, that you need, that, you, that we all need right at the moment. And we can't get it when we've got, you know, the telly going here, the inbox coming here, the kids banging on the door because they need this. So... You know, that, again, might come down a little bit to finding some structure and just a little bit of time, but that is so important at the moment. I can't get that um, for myself sitting at home. I'm working from home. I'm living at home. I'm homeschooling, doing all that. I've got to remove myself, you know, and I only need to remove myself sometimes for half an hour. Um, that's plenty. So that's, uh, yeah. that's what I'd add. What I'd add. I, I mean, t- Tuesday, that's exactly. I mean, I had a, literally I had a, almost a 17-hour day which is not typical and it's not something I, I'm proud of, but it's what I needed to do. And, and I said to Terry, I said, look, I'm just going to have a quick bite and I'm going downstairs for a 30-minute um, meditation in the sauna. And, and literally 25 minutes into that and, and a good sweat and a good think and a good moment of stillness, it was just perfect. And, and literally came upstairs, had a shower, went to bed, <laughs> I woke up on Wednesday and boxed on again, you know? So, so the thing is, Joanna, just very quickly on that point that you just heard expanded by, by all three of us, you know, an exhausted leader cannot lead a team. I mean, it's just not, it just can't be done. So you've got to protect the leader from being exhausted. And the only way you can do that is by making it imperative that you do take that 30, 40, 50 minute out of the day. It might be a longer day these days than normal than it is, but, um, you, you still need your me time. Okay, we've got a whole heap of questions. Um, I'm going to have to bring this to an end. The guys here um, have been um, very gracious with their time in being here. Um, the 17th of August is the kickoff as it relates to the second instalment. It is a layering as it relates to the instalment for the next 10 weeks between 5 and 6 p.m., commencing on the 17th of August. For 10 weeks in a row, we're going to have these two fine middle-aged men um, leading us on this topic regarding leadership and resilience in, and, and leadership in crisis. And, and many of you have some great questions. However, every question will be answered and or elaborated in a much more framework and yet unstructured sort of way as well with the open discussions that occur. Reach out to Nikki at businessbenchmarkgroup.com.au. If you're a client at Business Benchmark Group, 
and it's a very easy process. If you're not a client of Business Benchmark Group, it's a very easy process. Nikki at businessbenchmarkgroup.com.au. Look at the links on our socials at Business Benchmark Group. Nick and David and I have prepared, prepared a phenomenal program um, as it relates to leadership and resilience in crisis. It is an extension of the program we've already run and it'll be running between 5 and 6 p.m., which means you can sit on the dinner table with your loved ones and do this program together. It is not age sensitive. It is not expert sensitive. It is human beings, real people in real time, in real COVID restriction time. Let's get around the table. Let's spread the news. Let's get on top of the things we can control. Nick, thank you so much for being here and sharing. David, thank you so much for being here and sharing. Any final word from you? Uh, well, look, I'll just finish off quickly and say thanks Thanks for getting on board, everyone, tonight. Um, you know, this is the most amazing time. We're going to look back at this. This is a time for amazing... Um, it's an amazing life opportunity. Uh, David and I always talk about the stuff you learn from, I guess, when you fail, when you don't get the result that you want. But when you get really challenged like this, this is how we build reference points. This is how we how we deliberately build reference points in people. We take them away to places and give them challenges and activities and, and stuff that's, that's really hard for them to navigate and they learn the new behaviours and the responses they need to, to cope and thrive in those situations. But we're all in it now. We, nobody asked for it. Um, you know, the, the things that you need, Stefan, to, to, to build resilience are uncertainty, risk. You know, you need to be in a foreign environment. We've, we've got all that at the moment. You know, we might be at home, but it's foreign. What we're learning to control is foreign. So this is an amazing opportunity. It's an amazing opportunity for growth, um, for us, for our kids. Everyone's going to come out of this. And, um, and if, you, if you use this opportunity to your advantage, you, we're going to be way, way better. We're going to have that reference point behind us. Talk about these all the time that you can rely on five years from now. 10 years from now. I got through this so I can get through that. Very important, especially for our, for our young people to have that, you know, emotional capital that they can lean back on when times are tough. So, you know, we've got to embrace it. We've got to not shrink away from it, embrace it, lean into it. Like David says, lean, lean into this uncertainty, the fear, the discomfort, the disruption. We're going to come out of it uh, really well off if we just if we just apply what we need to. Thank you, Nick. David? Oh, look, just very quickly, you've summed up, Nick. Just, just be courageous to change. That's, that's all I could say. You know, I think once you, you know, use courage just to change a better version of yourself, you go forward. It's about momentum going forward. So good luck. Take care of yourselves. Be compassionate to yourself. Um, I look forward to catching up with you. You know, this is, uh, there is opportunity for all of us, really, you know, and, and uh, how we can, how we can move forward and help, help each other too. So have a great night and uh, take care. Thank you, everybody. Be safe. And does anybody know the score for Collingwood right now? <laughs> you can't help yourself. Mate, I, I just, I've resisted looking at my phone. <laughs> <laughs> All I could hear is freaking AFL noises in the background. My kids are going nuts upstairs. Wow. Anyway, <laughs> hey, guys, that, that was good. I mean, you know, we... Um, we, we certainly, we certainly covered off on some some good points. Wherever I am, we co we covered off on some good points, and um, again, timely that we didn't think this would be happening last week. So here we are, and um, this is I, I think again pointed pointed feedback and some some pearls for people to take away. I'm hoping today immediately, and. Um, and, you know, I, I, I'm so proud of, of, of our community. I'm so proud of you guys being in our community. And I'm, I'm just, how can we reach out to many more people and help many more people? I mean, that, that's the question. I mean, really, without being a martyr, but there, there, is two, there are two types of people out there. There are the people that are certainly feeling it and feeling it because they're truly not sure what to do next. And then there's the people that know they're in uncertain times, but they've got a plan. They got, they got that handle around control. And um, 
Anyway, I'm really glad you guys are in our community and um, you're, you're, you're huge supporters of ours and we're huge supporters of yours. And as we co collaborate to help many more people in, in our combined journey, only good can come from it. So we'll, we'll keep on fighting as a collective and I think we're doing a good job, guys. And, and we also need our time to also take our breath and, and receive our moment of um, you know, stillness. Mm. Well said, mate. Thank you. Uh, we love it too. Thanks, mate. All right. Well, let's have a good evening. And I'm going to go and have some, um, I think it'll be lunch I'm having now. <laughs> and uh, watch some footy on the TV and just escape for a couple of hours and come back and have another crack in the morning. Have a good evening. Thank you, David. Thank you, Nick. Really appreciate it. Cheers. Good luck, Evan. Thanks, mate.